Hello everyone, again, my name is Caitlin Proctor, and today we're gonna to be talking about exercise progressions and regressions, all right? Um, so this is such an important topic to prepare for. Exercise prescription is such a fundamental component of what we do. You know, day in, day out, we prescribe exercises in a lot of roles as a physio. So it's a must-know topic for the exam. Now, I wanna talk about something a little bit more serious before we, we, be, ugh, before we begin. All right, so it has come to my attention that some students are sharing our course materials or asking our students to send them our course manual. Now, we take this very, very seriously. Um, to all our current students that are here right now, we are able to trace back our course manuals to the original purchasers. And if we find out that you have shared our course materials, we have every right to remove you from our course and take legal action. Now, prospective students, if we find out that you have asked one of PT exam prep students for the materials, we will not allow you to ever attend one of our courses, uh, nor will you ever be allowed to attend any of our free webinars or courses. Now, there are two people that are on the attendee list, list today um, that I am going to be removing very shortly from our webinar because they have uh, been notified by other students or we've been notified by other students that they have asked our students for the materials. Um, so yeah, really, really not cool. Uh, I apologize to all the ethical soon to be physios who are listening to this right now. Um, but as you can imagine, we do our best to provide you with ample free webinars and content and advice. Um, if any of you are here and you've ever tried to reach out to me, I will always talk to you. I will always, um, you know, be someone to listen to your situation. But at the end of the day, you know, we are a business and we stay in business from people who are purchasing our courses. So I thank you to the many ethical students who have reported others. Um, if you would like to report someone who you know has our materials or has wrongfully or wrongfully has our materials, I should say, um, please contact me at info at ptexamprep.ca. All right. So enough about that negativity, but I just wanted to put that all out there right now because um, it's becoming more and more of an issue that our materials are going out there. So it's something that we're starting to crack down on. So yeah. Okay, enough about that. I want to learn a little bit more about you. So as always, if you've been to our webinars before, I'm gonna ask you a little bit about yourself. So first I wanna know what stage of preparation are you in? Great, great, great. Okay, I'm going to be closing this in around 10 seconds. Just wanna do a sound check here. So I'm seeing a few people say they can't hear me. If you can hear me, can you just type in yes to the chat box? Great, okay, awesome. Woo, lots of yeses, perfect. <laughs> Uh, that would have been a really uh, shame of a rant that I went on if no one heard me, uh, but awesome. Okay, let's close this. Let's take a look at our results here. So our results are showing us that the majority of you are preparing for your practical exam. That's awesome. We have some of you preparing for the written, um, and then, yeah, a few little stragglers in there, but that's great. That's what I want to see. The exam is right around the corner, so that's awesome. Uh, which practical exam are you planning on taking? <clears throat> Great, about five more seconds here. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll. And let's take a look there. So most of you guys are doing November, some of you are June. Uh, yeah, we have a few not sure in November, but that's awesome again. The majority of you guys are writing in November. Uh, to give you guys a count, we're at about 200 people here right now, um, so that's good. Okay, let's do one more poll question. Are you currently enrolled in a course? Lots of options there, sorry guys. Okay, so three more seconds. Get your votes in. Great, great, great. Okay, so let's look at that. Um, so yes. 
Uh, some people are in the crash, some people are in the full, um, someone else, and then we have a few that are, uh, you know, they wish they would have. All right, so two more questions I'm going to ask you, and I'm actually going to get you guys to put these in the um, chat box. So, you know, we're always trying to improve and, and get, you know, more good content to you guys. Uh, one of the questions in the follow-up uh, today is going to be asking you about, um, you know, what you would like to see, what other content you'd like to have. So one of the questions I want to ask you is what's the number one issue you are currently struggling with? It could be a topic. It could be, you know, stress management techniques. It could be, um, you know, balancing everything that's going on in your life. Let me know what is the issue right now. Okay, so I'm going to read some of these out to you. Now, remember, these are all anonymous, so no one can see what you're writing, so don't worry about that. Um, but so a lot of people are saying stress, yeah. Time management and stress, that's a big one. Um, we're getting some pediatrics, uh, people are saying. Yeah, that's definitely confusing. Time management, knowing where to start and what to study. Um, knowing what is likely to be on the practical exam. Yeah, it's a hard question. Um, and, and you know, there's a lot of issues around uh, what information you're giving out on the exam because you want to or what information you are talking about for the exam and again that comes back to ethics and you know you, we can't talk about what has been on the exam so that's a really tough one um, time constraints yeah exactly okay lots of lots of things posted here um, balance exercises exercise prescription subjective history good okay so thanks for that, guys. The last thing I'm gonna ask you before we start is what product would you like to see us offer? What's something that you're like, oh man, I wish PT Exam Prep was doing that. Calgary courses. Well, you'll be happy to know we actually have Calgary courses for the next exam, unfortunately not this one. Um, templates for assessments, yep. <laughs> So I was expecting to get this one. There's a flood of mock exams people are asking for for the practical. Um, yes, I hear you, I hear you. All right, mock exams, yes. Uh, more videos with assessments and techniques. I like that. Yeah, the videos are super, super helpful and how to plan for the last three weeks before the exam. Okay, good. All right, thank you everyone. I really appreciate that. If you guys ever do have topics, you know, that you're interested in or that you want um, me to cover, please do let me know in email, okay? All righty, so let's keep going here. So let's talk about the first thing. You know, my goal today is to explain to you how to properly progress and regress exercises. So for those of you who are in our courses, whether it be the crash course or our full comprehensive course, I know you've gone over these key points to exercise prescription in quite a lot of detail. Um, so this will be a little bit of a, of a review for you. For everyone else, unfortunately, we don't have the time to go over all the key points for exercise prescription, but I want to make sure that you have a good general idea of how to approach these stations, okay? So number one, find the appropriate exercise. Now, in order to find the appropriate exercise, you need to look at the question. The question will lend you information that will state when their surgery or injury occurred, um, and you must use your understanding of the stages of healing to determine which exercises are appropriate for your client. So, for example, to put this into a bit of context, you will be um, looking at potentially a patient that had an ACL surgery or, you know, a post-shoulder repair surgery or knee replacement, whatever it is, you will prescribe an exercise completely different if the patient has one week post-op versus six weeks post-op, okay? So really important to remember that, you know, you need to prescribe the exercise for the appropriate stage of healing. If the patient is nearing returning to sport and you give them a bed exercise, you will not receive a high mark, okay? You want to make sure that at that point you're giving a sport-specific exercise. Right. So finding the appropriate exercise may include progressing or regressing your patient's exercise. So that's, of course, what we're going to talk about today. It's ironic that the words progressing and regressing are almost like a tongue twister for me. So if I over enunciate them, that's because I'm tripping over my own tongue. But uh, the next point that we want to talk about here is demonstrate the exercise. Okay, so I want you to actually demonstrate the exercise. If you are teaching a standing calf stretch to someone who is independently standing, you know, stand next to the wall and show the patient exactly what the exercise looks like. 
Now, this is a question I get a lot, and you know, the, if the patient is immobile or in bed, what should you do? So, uh, you know, if you're asked to teach a bridge uh, to a, an immobile patient post-surgery, give them a lot of instruction. Use your hands. Use cueing to ensure they understand the exercise. You know, we don't necessarily in this situation expect you to lay on the floor to teach them a bridge, but if you are teaching a patient a floor exercise and expecting them to get onto the floor to do it, then you would want to display that exercise. Okay, the next is have the patient demonstrate the exercise. So here's a really uh, important point that a lot of people forget, and that's that you want to expose the area. Okay, this is a big miss for a lot of students. Um, we were doing our practical review day in Vancouver, and I was talking to a lot of students about this, and you know, you need to be um, obviously appropriate with where you're um, exposing the area. So for example, if you were to ask your patient to perform a squat, what area of the body would you ask them to expose? Knees, yeah, perfect. So a lot of you guys are doing knees. Some of you have said thighs mostly knees. So yeah, I would be wanting to be looking at the knees. Um, and what are the big things that we're looking for with knee? Obviously alignment, but what are those kind of two keywords? Yeah, so lots of you are getting it. We're looking for knee valgus and knee varus, right? So we want to see what position their knee is going in. Um, some places that you could also expose to would maybe be their low back to see what their lumbar spine looks like. Okay, awesome. So get them to show you that they understand the exercise by performing it themselves. So ask them where they feel the stretch or where they feel the strengthening exercise. In clinical practice, I gotta say, I am often surprised by how many people feel exercises in the weirdest places. You know, you give someone a, a calf exercise, you get them up into the wall and they say, oh, I feel this in my big toe. Well, you know what, that's great, but that's not really where I want you to be feeling it. So make sure you're asking the patient when they're demonstrating, where are you feeling this, okay? Last, have the patient, you know, demonstrate this exercise enough times for you to feel like they understand the exercise and are doing it properly. You do not need to have them complete all three sets of 10 or whatever your fit principles are. So I see this question a few times actually um, in the comments here and that you don't need your patient to finish all of the exercises that you're giving them. You just need to watch them, um, deem that they are competent and doing it right for that exercise. And from there you can say, all right, so I would normally get you to do and then go on with your spiel. All right, next point is give feedback. You must correct performance. If you could see me right now, I'm clapping my hands together. You must correct performance. Find something, anything. Look up and down the chain to find some form of feedback to give them. You know, even if they're doing it perfectly, we suggest you always find something to correct or give them feedback about, all right? So don't be afraid to be hands-on. Standing back will appear like you're not confident. So when you're giving them feedback, get in there. You know, get you know, down in a good body mechanic safe position. Get your hands on them and show them what changes you want to make. I'm such a hand talker right now. I'm using my hands so much to pretend that my hands are on a patient. But I really, really want you guys, uh, I want to encourage you to just be natural about that. And the best way to do it is to be confident and show the patient these changes, okay? Next is prescribe using fit principles. So state each parameter when prescribing an exercise. So for example here, I'm gonna give you a good little spiel. So I want you to perform this gentle, pain-free calf stretch for 30 seconds at a time. You're gonna perform two sets of this stretch with a 30 second rest between each stretch. Perform this stretch daily for one week. So during that explanation, I stated sets, repetitions, what kind of exercise they're doing, rest, the amount of times per day, and the amount of times per week. There's a lot of information to you know, get in in a quick 10 second spiel. That's what we're expecting you to do on the exam. So always let the patient know that these exercises should be pain free. And make sure you leave them with that parting note that you know, if they experience any pain, um, they should stop performing the exercise and contact you immediately. All right, so, Next, we're gonna go into the specifics of exercise progression and regression. So we're going to use shoulder flexion as our exercise to progress and regress. So the main thing here with exercise progression is that it's a way to make the exercise more challenging. There are many ways to do this beyond just increasing the weight, and we'll go over our PT exam preps ways that we recommend for you to progress exercises. 
For exercise regressions, this is a way to decrease the difficulty or, you know, a certain challenge or, or um, sorry, decrease a certain challenging aspect of the exercise. So something that I want all of you to do for homework is to make a database or a data bank uh, or list of key exercises. And I want you to think of two to three progressions and regressions for each of these. So I'll be sending you a follow-up email at the end. And one of the takeaways that I'm going to give you is to really work on this data bank of exercises. Okay, so for each main body part, you know, whether it's lower extremity, upper extremity, um, I want you to create a good list of exercises so that when you go you know, on exam day, these exercises are fresh on the top of your mind, okay? So another thing I'd like to challenge you to do is to pro progress and regress each of these exercises by only using the following three pieces of equipment. So again, something I've talked to quite a few students about um, are the three things that are always in the room. That's your body. Your body will always be in the room. So when you're thinking of progressions and regressions, try to think of how can I incorporate, you know, your body weight into it. The next is a chair or a bed. So your ch the chair will always be in the room. If not, a bed will always be in the room. So really important to use those. And the last is the wall. The wall will always be in the room. So this is something that's, you know, a, a, a scary story, but, you know, I once had a student that had to progress, uh, had a station where they were asked to progress an exercise. The question was based around them using TheraBand. There was a very small, she said about one foot piece uh, of TheraBand in the room. So the examiner said that it had snapped in the previous station, so the student was left to figure out another option. Now, of course, there are lots of other options, but for any of you ha that have done the exam before, you know, you know that there's a lot of stress uh, happening in that moment and your brain's just not thinking clearly. So what I want you to do is number one, expect the unexpected always during your OSCE. If anyone watch, watches Big Brother, they'll, they'll know that uh, tagline, expect the unexpected. Um, but when you're creating this database of exercise of progressions and regressions, try to think of ones that only use these three options, your body, the chair bed, and the wall, okay? So when you're progressing or regressing exercises, there's also four great modifiers to use. The modifiers are number one, load. You can modify the load by changing it. So you can either make it lighter or heavier. You could add weights, you could take away weights, you could use TheraBand, you could use body weight. So lots of different ways that you can increase or decrease the load. Next, you could change the starting position. So you could try them standing, you could try them lying, you could go in a gravity eliminated position, you could go um, with gravity position, you could go against gravity. So lots of different options to start the exercise. The next is range of motion. So you could get them to a smaller, more pain-free range, or you could get them to just work in the end of range. Again, use these different tools to modify the exercise. And last is speed. So with speed, you could get them to slow down the exercise or, of course, speed up the exercise. Uh, maybe it's, um, you know, a, a hopping exercise where you want them to stick the landing. So it's a quick hop and a slow pause at the end. But lots of ways to modify them using speed. So just a heads up, this is a great five by five minute station. So maybe the question would say something like, how can you change an exercise? Load. Start position, range of motion, and speed. Remember that, okay? Really important points. All righty. So I'm just gonna take a look at the questions here to see if there's anything that I've missed. Do you need a warm-up or warm-up set for the practical exam? No. All right. Do they need to demo the exercise on their non-affected side first before their affected side? So this is a difficult question. I, I'm gonna give a blanket statement and say, whatever exercise you're giving them should be appropriate for their affected side. So I would be expecting them to demonstrate it on the side you want them to do it. All right, let's keep going. So after we talk about modifiers, we can talk about changing fit principles. So what can we change? We can change sets, we can change repetitions, frequency and rest. All right, so for example, in the shoulder flexion that we were talking about before, this patient may have started to lose their form, say after 15 reps. Maybe it's because you know they've been doing a lot of reps and they're getting fatigued. So you could decrease the amount of reps so that so what they are doing um, has more quality of movement in it. Or you could increase the rest time. 
All right. If the station asks you to change their exercise from an endurance to a strength exercise, you'd want to make sure you know what parameters need to be changed. So for example, instead of saying, you know, I want you to do 12 reps, um, three sets, you could say, I want you to do two sets of six reps. All right. So making sure you know how to change these exercises because you don't know what the question is going to ask. Another example that I could think of is if you get a station where you need to modify the exercise because your patient is reporting severe DOMS, you could decrease the amount of times they perform it per week or decrease the sets or repetitions. So you really using these fit principles to control how you're changing that exercise. So I hope what you're seeing right now is that there are so many ways to adjust an exercise, right? Just remember, if the question states that they are working in a certain zone, so if we, say for example, this patient is working in an endurance range, make sure you stay within those appropriate parameters unless the question potentially says, let's change the exercise from endurance to strength, okay? You will not receive full marks if you prescribe an endurance exercise with non-endurance parameters okay I really hope that makes sense to you guys so let's keep going we're going to talk about the quadriceps stretch so now that you know all the key ways to progress and regress an exercise let's work on building that database that I asked you to do or that data bank okay so let's look at the quad stretch what I want you to first think about is how could we regress this exercise so in the chat box please let me know how would you regress it Prone, okay, laying down on your side, leg on a chair. <laughs> I know who you are. Yes, good, good, good. So what I'm looking for is, yes, yeah, seeing that you're finding ways to decrease it. And, and the biggest way to do that is, of course, to decrease the stretch on that muscle. And how we decrease the stretch on that muscle is decreasing the amount of flexion in the knee. So however you choose to do that is right. So some of the examples that I'm gonna show you here, and a lot of you have got this, is lying on your side. Great. It maybe isn't as intense as doing something you know, like this. The other thing that I think is really important to know is putting your foot on a chair. Um, again, not to throw my Vancouver people under the bus, but it was really interesting to see how many people got caught up on how to progress a standing or how to regress a standing quad stretch. Alrighty. So next one that we're going to go through here is we're going to go into quadriceps stretch progression. So how would you progress this exercise? So I'm seeing some of you guys say hip extension. Yep, that works. Um, a few of you guys are saying using load. For a stretch, we generally don't want to use load. We just want to modify the position that they're in. Okay, yeah, a lot of you guys are saying weight. Um, okay. So let's talk about this. Uh, perfect. I'm seeing um, a few of you guys starting to say things like pelvic tilt. So if we look at that pelvic tilt, what are we wanting them to go into anterior pelvic tilt or posterior pelvic tilt? Good, okay, good. So what's happening when you're going into a posterior pelvic tilt? If you can imagine, you're actually moving that insert, or the origin point of the quadriceps. You're moving it up, that A-I-I-S, which is more rectus femoris, but you're moving it up so that you're getting a longer length of the muscle, and so you're going to be feeling more of a stretch into that muscle, okay? What is the action or the uh, layman's term or cue that we would give to our patient to go into a posterior pelvic tilt? Yeah, so tuck your tail in, tuck your tailbone under. Um, slouch, no. Uh, camel pose, no. Glutes contraction, so that's what I'm looking for. So squeeze your bum, tuck your bum in, tuck your tailbone in. Lots of you guys are getting that, that's awesome. All right, good stuff. So the other one here that I, I'm showing is just you know a standing progression, and, and all we're trying to say with that is you know squeeze your bum, go into that posterior pelvic tilt, and you can kind of push that hip into more extension. So good job. So I'm gonna ask you guys a, a few other little questions here. So what if your patient had poor balance? What would you do to modify the exercise in that case? 
I think a lot of you guys know this. Yeah, hold on to the bed, hold on to the wall, use a chair, right? You, you don't have to get too creative when your patient has poor balance. You know, if they're um, if they're someone who is you know, a two person transfer and you're not able to get them out of bed, then you could get them into side lying if that was appropriate. Um, and you could try to get them to stretch in that way. So the next one that I wanna talk about too is what if your patient was unable to grab their foot? Again, I think this should be pretty easy for you guys. Use a chair, use a strap, use a towel. Whoa, I've never seen so many towel, the word towels flashed up on the screen. Yeah, perfect. Put a brand around their foot, use TheraBand if needed, um, but somehow modify their, their hand to foot so that you know there's something there. Great, so what if your patient uh, was a dancer and needed you needed to give them a progress stretch that worked on their end of range flexibility? I'll let you guys think about that for a sec. Okay, so we got a lot of creative things happening here. So we've got splits with knee flexion, we have half kneeling, we have a functional stretch, we have contract relax, we have maintain the hold period, side lying as much as you can. So this is a bit of a mean question, guys. I'm gonna say, yes, you're all right, you know, you wanna make it functional, you wanna use additional bands, the chair, the bed to make it appropriate. But I bring this up for a purpose, and that's to remind you that this is an entry level exam, okay? On top of that, it's a standardized exam across Canada. The Alliance would never have a standardized dancer in each of the stations across Canada. So rest assured, you're not gonna get a tricky station like this, okay? So hopefully it didn't make too many of you mad having to think about that, but I just want to kind of draw your attention to when you're out there creating you know, practice situations, practice scenarios, um, these stretches, this, this data bank that I'm asking you to do, you know, make it realistic. Remember that this question is being asked all across Canada, so <clears throat> they're not gonna be getting you to do something crazy, okay? On top of that, I bring this up because I want to remind you that every actor in these stations is different, okay? So when you're giving feedback for how they're doing the stress or, how, or stretch or how you're progressing or regressing, they are act actors. They may not actually have that restriction um, or um, flexibility. So make sure that what you're doing, you're stating everything out loud, you're stating everything that you're seeing, um, because that's the only way that they're gonna ensure uh, that it's you know a standardized exam. Um, that's a different way that I could say this to you guys. We want to make sure that when you're going through these stations, you're going through your template, you're going through the proper way um, to prescribe this exercise because potentially the, the actor has been cued to, <clears throat> let's say, perform a poor quad stretch by um, you know, having their hip in a lot of flexion. Well, we want you to be able to verbalize that you know we want that hip to be um, flush with the other knee. We want your legs to not be in an abducted position. So state all those things that you're looking for, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. I kind of think I might have confused a few of you out there. All right, so I want you to try, all right? We're gonna try getting you thinking about uh, a common exercise and that's a squat. I'm gonna put on a one minute timer and I want you to think about, so don't write in the chat box, okay? I, I Please do not write in the chat box. I want you to think about two progressions and two regressions of a squat. All right, 10 more seconds. Good, okay. What I want to have just happened there is for you guys to realize what I want you to do for each exercise. It doesn't take long. That was one minute. And I'm, I'm assuming that you guys have at least two progressions and two regressions for the squat. So. Find a partner, find someone you know online or someone that you're studying with, and you know 
pick 10 main exercises and create regressions and progressions for each of those. And use those as your data bank so that when you're on the exam and you have to do exercise prescription, you already have these exercises in your head, okay? So that's really what I wanted to get you guys to do there. But let's get you now to write in the chat box your squat regression. Okay, so I'm just going through to see if there's anything kind of overall interesting that I should uh, bring up to you guys. But yeah, a lot of you are doing very normal things. So, you know, more mini squats, more sit to stands, you know, wall supported squat, a chair squat, a quarter squat. And this is everything that I kind of have here for you. So holding on to a chair, maybe only going down into a quarter squat, potentially doing more of a wall squat. Um, if there's a ball in the room, a great option to do is a wall squat with a ball um, and then doing more of a sit to stand. So honestly, you guys got a lot of those. So that's awesome. All right, let's talk about those progressions now. What would you do for those? Yeah, and again, you guys are killing it. Squat should be a really easy one, so I'm happy about this, but um, you know, some of you are saying things like increase the load. Uh, all right, but how would you increase the load? You know, tell me exactly how, what exercise you would give for that. So there's two people in here that I'm seeing that increase the load. Um, I'm seeing the same person write add weight, so that works, yeah, awesome. So uh, lower the height of the bed, go into a deeper squat, do a one leg squat, do a pistol squat. And those are all really what I have here. One that I don't see um, many have is to maybe add in a TheraBand to do different, um, a different diagonal motion. So maybe doing a cross body. Uh, if you wanted to give maybe a functional exercise for say a golfer or um, a hockey player, you could add something in like this. Um, other things you want to think about is adding weights or dumbbells by your side, which is perfect. You, again, you can make this functional if, say, the patient was um, having to return to work and it was a return to work exercise, um, and say they had to lift from floor till um, till hip height. Then you could, you know, get them to use a weight and to practice this. And the other one that I have here is a lunge. Um, so that's, you know, another really good option is that you can always change the exercise a little bit too, right? All right, so we're gonna go through some practice scenarios here. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys one minute to read through this question and then we're gonna talk about it, okay? All right, so in this 10 minute scenario, what you're being asked to do is that you have a 55 year old patient who had a total knee replacement four weeks ago. He is progressing quickly through the exercises uh, he's received from the inpatient physiotherapist. You are now asked to progress the following exercises, heel slides and quadriceps setting. So let's see what you guys did for heel slides. So, um, heel slides with weights, standing hamstring curls, uh, heel slide progression would be to add weights, ridges, sitting heel slides, partial squat. Okay, so I see a lot of things coming up here. There are some key principles that I wanna draw your attention to. So if we look at this station here, what we're trying to figure out is what are they asking us? So this patient is four, had four weeks ago had a total knee replacement, okay? He's quickly progressing through his exercises, and it's your job now to progress the following exercises. So those two exercises should show you that there's two main things that you're trying to work on. Can anyone tell me what those two things you're trying to work on given the exercises that they've given in the question? Knee flexion and knee extension. So not a lot of you guys actually got that, but what I'm wanting for you to understand is that when we look at that station and we see heel slides, we're thinking knee flexion, Okay, that's the main purpose of that knee flexion. And what are we strengthening with knee, uh, heel slides? 
Yeah, so we're looking to get that hamstring strength improved. So all the options that you guys put in should be specific for knee flexion and hamstring strength, all right? So yes, you could kind of kill two birds with one stone if you want, um, but some of the examples that I'm seeing there is, you know, we really want to focus on how do we improve knee flexion. So they're doing lying in bed heel slides. So maybe a good way to do that would be to add a TheraBand to their foot. However, because it's a total knee replacement, we're assuming that their, their main goal of strength and knee flexion is that they probably don't uh, have that end of range knee flexion. So now you need to determine, am I wanting to give them strength as my primary goal or am I wanting to give them knee flexion as the primary goal? And this is where, you know, it's hard for me to help you with this because we don't necessarily know enough in this situation. Right? By looking at the question, we know that there are four weeks, and we know that we probably aren't getting that full knee flexion range of motion. So my best advice for you guys would be to include something that still attains both goals. All right. So something like a bridge is really going to be working on hamstring strength, not necessarily knee flexion. So can you guys give me an example of an exercise that works on both hamstring strength and knee flexion? Yeah, bike's a good option. Good, we could do hamstring curls, prone knee blend bending. I'm liking that one. I think pro, prone knee bending oh, is a good option. Yeah, good, good, all right. So just, uh, you know, just wanting you to think about it a little bit of a different way, okay? So next one is quadricep setting. So again, what range of motion are we working on and what muscle strength are we working on? We're working on knee extension and we're working on quadricep strength. Perfect, good job guys, that one seemed pretty easy to you. So <clears throat> again, what's a good exercise that's working on quadricep setting and knee extension? A little bit harder of an example here. So knee, uh, knee over roll, is a, a very hospital exercise, if you will. Um, they're four weeks and they're progressing well through this exercise. So I don't know if that would be kind of my best option. What are some other things? Okay, so I'm not seeing any of you guys give this one, but one of the ones that I love to do in practice is to put a ball behind the patient's knee and get them standing um, up against the wall. And what I ask them to do is to push their knee back into the wall against the ball. And the ball is usually kind of one of those squishy balls so that they still can get into that end range knee extension. And they're still working on that quadricep strength. Okay. Does that make sense to you guys? Just give me a yes if you can visualize that exercise. So standing against the wall. Perfect. Yeah. Pushing your knee back into the wall. Love it. Yeah, a lot of you guys are saying you've never heard of that exercise. Okay, no problem. So what's another good um, change that we could give to that exercise? So knee on the bed, pushing the knee down onto that kind of squishy ball if you wanted. Yep, that's kind of a regression of the one I just gave, but that totally works. All right, another option to do this is to put TheraBand around the knee and get them to extend their knee in standing with that TheraBand pulling away from them. So. Again, other options. And I know I told you guys to work on progressions and regressions using you know, your body and the wall uh, and chairs, but something to think about that you could um, do as a scenario or exercise for this scenario. Okay, let's keep going. So <clears throat> this is practice scenario number two. You'll have one minute to go through it. And so I just want you to note, this is a five minute station. We will be going over a written follow-up to the station afterwards.
Alrighty, so let's talk about this. So your 15-year-old soccer player patient sprained her ankle six weeks ago. Last week, you prescribed her a balance exercise on a foam pad. During your session today, she advised you she did not complete them because she had pain. So teach the patient a new exercise. So before we go, let's talk about those four modifiers. What are four ways you can modify an exercise? Type it in the chat box. Okay, we got load. You guys should know this. Changing position. Got speed, and then there's one more. Yeah, changing range of motion. So changing that start position, you know, changing the range of motion that they're going into, changing the load, and changing the speed. So let's make that make a little bit more sense with this station. So <clears throat> how could we change this exercise? So all she's doing is a standing balance exercise on a foam pad. So I see a lot of you guys are saying things like take away the foam pad. Awesome. <clears throat> That's great. But I'm going to try to, you know, get to the corners of your brain, if you will. And I want you to use one of those four modifiers. So load. How can we change the load in this? Yeah, so we could maybe get her to use a chair to help while she's on this. So that would change the load of her body. Okay, that's good. What about how could we change the starting position? Yeah, we could do a thinner foam pad. We could use a different kind of unstable surface under her foot. Okay, we could change it from one foot to two foot. Great ways of changing the starting positions. Good job, guys. Okay, how could we change the range of motion in this? Start with the knee bent. Yeah, good option. She's a soccer player. That land or that loading foot, depending on if it is, you know, her dominant foot, will likely be in a knee bent position. So that's definitely a way that we could progress or regress the exercise. What else? There's not a lot of options that you guys are giving me for changing the range of motion. Yeah, so maybe we get her to go into a more hip flexed, flexed position too. So we're going to enter more of a squat um, to change the range of motion in her hips. Okay. And last, what about the speed? How can we change the speed for this? And again, guys, I know I'm being hard on you. These aren't easy things that I'm asking you to do. There's obviously a very easy answer to this. Take away the foam pad. You know, get her onto a different uh, mattress. Get her to open her eyes. Get her to close her eyes. There's very easy ways to do this. But I'm trying to get your brain to think a little bit harder, okay? So for the speed, maybe we get her to do, you know, quicker squats on here. Maybe we get her to do stand step arounds. All right, let's go back to the question now and look at what it's really asking. So teach the patient a new exercise. And of course, it's saying that she has pain, so we need to regress the exercise. So in balance, she's standing on a foam pad. The main way to regress this exercise is, of course, to take away the foam pad, All right? If that still caused her pain, what would we want to do? So she's standing on a foam pad, caused her pain. She's standing, no foam pad, still causing pain. So the purpose of this is we still want to give her some sort of balance or proprioceptive exercise. So maybe we get her seated on a wobble board and getting moving her leg that way. Okay. Maybe we get her doing double leg. The exercise doesn't say if it's single or double, or we get her to hold on to a chair. Perfect. Good job. There's a lot of you guys that I think are kind of catching on to that. If not, just, you know, try this out with a few more stations. The next question I'm going to put on your stage here, on your stage, <laughs> on your screen, um, is a written follow-up question, okay? So you're going to get one minute to do this, and I promise we're almost done, okay?
All right, let's go through this. So what three systems affect balance? So there's a few of you guys that are getting this right, which is good, but our three systems that affect balance are vision, our vestibular system, and proprioception, okay? The next is what parameters would you prescribe this patient if you were giving her a strength exercise? So what we're looking for here is any reps that are less than six, any sets around two to six, and a rest time of between two to five minutes, okay? So really important here, you know, take your phone out if you want, take a screenshot or take a, yeah, take a screenshot or take a picture of this chart. Super, super important, but I want you guys to know these, all right? So what's coming up next? That's the end of this webinar. Thank you so much for joining me. The big things that are coming up is we have our Mastering 5x5 stations that's coming up on November 15th at 9 a.m., all right? We also have, uh, I know most of you guys, or I know all of you guys pretty much, uh, are here for the uh, practical exam, but we also are starting to shift into a little bit more of the written um, webinars because, of course, the exam is done on the 17th. Uh, so we're going to have a practice written mock exam on November 27th, gearing people up for that uh, next uh, written exam in November. Otherwise, practical courses, guys. I know a lot of you are taking the exam really soon, but I wanted to just talk to you a little bit more about our courses. Um, our, we have two options. We have a live online course, and we also have a face-to-face -face course. Our live online course, you know, you get a course manual, you get your ethics workbook, you get practice stations with detailed feedback, unlimited support. Um, the only difference that you'll see between our live face-to-face -face and our live online is that student ratio. So there's more students in the face-to-face -face than on the online. Other guy, otherwise, guys, um, our courses have been posted for 2019. We're, of course, in Vancouver, Ottawa, Toronto, and new, we're coming to Calgary. Our course is actually posted for Calgary. We posted it, I think, two days ago. We only have one spot left in the course, unfortunately. So if that's, um, you know, if you live in the Calgary area, I recommend signing up for that right away because, yeah, there's only one spot left. Um, we're going to have a new course in Edmonton as well. And these are for the June exam. The start dates, I think, are February or March. Um, for all other locations, of course, consider taking one of the virtual courses. But um, again, I know lots of you guys are taking the exam uh, coming up really soon in November, uh, but we are trying to get some free practical review days in. So vote for your city now. I'm going to be sending out an email after this and you can click on it, uh, vote for your city, and we'll let you know if we are coming to your city, okay? We're going to come to the city who votes for us the most, so it's going to be pretty awesome. Um, otherwise, that's it for me. So I'm going to be um, answering a few questions that are coming up on the screen here. So I'm going to stick around for about 10 more minutes and answer some questions for you guys.